This video was created on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kainai, Pekani, Sutina, and the Yarhi Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. I used to pay full admission to the Glenbow Museum just to see one painting, and uh, that was a painting by an artist by the name of Carl Rungius. And uh, in my opinion, nobody could paint uh, moose better than Carl Rungius could. So uh, I'm very excited to be right here today. Uh, this is the area where uh, he would have uh, set some of his paintings and uh, probably the moose as well. So today, let's paint a moose. Okay, a few supplies we're going to need this morning before we paint the moose. Uh, we've got a, a watercolor tray. You can get these at an art supply store or a dollar store. We've got uh, a few different sizes of brushes. As long as they're soft and hold water, they should work out fine. We've got a pencil, uh, I'm sorry, a, a charcoal pencil here. And we've got a sharpener. These little sharpeners will do the trick. And we've got a uh, kneaded eraser that I've made into the, uh, the head of a moose this morning. I, uh, I like making the shape of whatever it is I'm gonna paint in uh, with my kneaded eraser so I understand uh, how it's shaped. Also, uh, a piece of Kleenex. Um, it's not for crying. We're not going to cry over our drawings, but I'll tell you what, uh, these are good for um, soaking up any errors that you feel that you made. And uh, finally, I've got my tea here in my Art with Raspo mug, and uh, we're going to start uh, painting the moose. Okay, so this morning I've got my watercolor paper uh, taped down to my desk, and we are going to uh, paint it vertically so that's going to be the orientation of the paper is going to be portrait style and what you're going to notice is or what i want you to notice is all the shapes uh, surrounding the moose so what i mean by that is if we draw the moose coming in from the side here, we're going to notice the shapes inside, the negative shapes over here um, in the sky that the uh, moose is defined by. And I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of erasing here to get the proportions proper, but that's okay. Remember when uh, you're doing my videos, you can pause it and catch up at any time. I want uh, this to be a fun thing for you to do. How it turns out is going to be unique to, to you. It's not going to be exactly like mine. I, I don't want it to be. I want it to be how you uh, interpret this moose. I can already see that I've maybe gone a little too small or not, I don't know. Okay, like this. Yeah, the moose has got a beard here. Now, when I was drawing this with students, we learned a lot about the moose that I 
had no idea about. I did not know they were great swimmers and divers. They can stand or water for about 50 seconds. They also like to eat vegetation, so shrubs mainly, like willows and whatnot, and um, they really like to eat things that have been, uh, or, or uh, all the shrubs that come up after a natural, we think it's a disaster, but to them it's not. Floods and fires, they really love to eat the shrubs that uh, come out of come out of those and and uh, what else we learned was that they eat about 70 kilograms a day of vegetation so for most of my students that's if they're in kindergarten or grade one that's a lot um, heavier than than the than a, a child is so they eat a lot. You don't get the right amount of uh, number of, I think these are called tines on its uh, antlers, and don't worry, I'm not going to be totally scientific about it, or totally exact, we're just going to try and draw and paint a, a good moose today. So I'm not going to go in here. Okay, you know what? Uh, it's always a good idea to go off the page if you're going to go off the page because uh, it doesn't look right if you try and squish it in. So it's better that uh, this one, if it's going to go off the page, just let it go off the page. That's what I always tell my students, and I know it's hard because you want to you want to uh, cram it into your uh, your painting on the page, but try not to because it's more important to be accurate. Not only that, you might get a more interesting uh, composition. Okay. Have a look at that. Okay, so we've got a pretty good outline. I'd say we're we're uh, ready to start painting. Okay, one thing that we're going to do today that's maybe a little bit different is uh, we are going to paint. We're going to load up our big brush with water here. We're going to paint that whole, uh, we're going to paint the whole paper, the entirety in a kind of, we're going to give it a blue, bluey purpley uh, kind of wash over the whole thing. And 
we're going to let that dry for for a few minutes. Maybe about 10 minutes or so and, and we'll come back to it. Okay, so let's start by uh, putting some uh, kind of brown in uh, on the moose here. And we're going to add some kind of black wherever it's real dark. So we're just going to use brown and black uh, over the whole thing here where we see brown and black. Now that I look at this antler up here, I can see that uh, it went, goes right off the page. So we're going to bring that right off the page here. Now I saw my friend Ellie left hand uh, the other day and uh, I asked him and uh, partially because where uh, Carl Mung Rungius uh, drew the moose or painted the moose in uh, around Banff there, the, uh, the local indigenous people there, the uh, Yarhi uh, Nakoda, People, they um, they uh, had, of course, their their own name for the moose, and so I asked Ali uh, what that would be, and this is what he said. In yeah, in your language, how do you say moose? We, the moose in our language is ta ta. Okay, so that um, the moose is called uh, Ta. That's uh, thank you, Ali, for uh, sharing that with us. Okay, so everywhere it's it's kind of uh, dark. I've put some brown. It looks like we could put some. Uh, Almost some yellow, yellow in here too. It's almost a yellowy orange in here. Okay, we're going to add some uh, blue in the sky there around the uh, antlers. Now I'm going to show you uh, what some of my students did uh, both at the uh, Blackie Elementary School and uh, Percy Pegler Elementary School. Um, I think in uh, Blackie, uh, the kids or the students, they did uh, a moose painting, as you can see, got some really good uh, results there. I believe that these were grade uh, two, three. And then in uh, Percy Pegler, we did uh, a moose, but we did it uh, just using uh, black and white chalk on uh, brown paper, and we got a good result that way too. So 
if you wanted to do this moose with just in black and white or a pencil drawing, you could do that too. I'm going to try and draw this uh, kind of mountain shape down here or paint it in instead of drawing it in and just going to go down to this kind of line where that is. Now with this uh, Kleenex what you could do is you could dab this right in here, get a little bit of the clouds in there, wherever you see some kind of clouds. Okay, back to the back to the moose. I think uh, what we could do is uh, go in with a little bit of white and kind of a yellow that is if you do have a little bit of white watercolor okay just let our moose painting uh, dry a little bit and i got to thinking that um, right now would be a really good time to go in back into it and uh do a little bit of uh, work with our charcoal lines. Make sure that our map is still pretty good. Okay, what I noticed is that my camera was, uh, the, the painting I was doing was a lot darker than how you were seeing it. So I've uh, got it more accurate now. So you can see how dark I've actually been working. I'm sorry about that, but uh, sometimes I make um, filming mistakes. But hopefully, if you did go dark, then you'll be happy to see that I did too. So that's uh, the upside of that, I guess. Okay, a little bit of a jump there from uh, a few minutes ago because uh, what I did was I let the, um, the painting part of it dry and then I've gone uh, back in to the drawing with the charcoal pencil again. All the little, um, the way the fur is going, um, the directions, I've kind of... Uh, been drawing on this and uh, you'll notice on the the moose that uh, the the fur is going in all kinds of different directions I'm kind of making the uh, lines go with the fur and uh, I've got most of it done but uh, I also can see that there is a uh, yellowy brown kind of uh, all over the place on, the, on this moose. Like we can put a kind of yellowy brown lines wherever they can be seen. And...
Okay, we're going to let this go. I think it's done. Uh, so it is the uh, 6th day of May. 2023. And we're going to call it uh, what Mr. Left Hand called it in his uh, language because it's local to where uh, where I was and where Carl Rungius painted the moose and in his language the moose is ta t a and I'm just going to sign it here and I hope you've had fun today and hope your moose drawing or painting turns out the way you want it and uh, we'll see you next week.